We need to have a chat about vitamin C. Hello and welcome, I am usually Alice, but today, today I am a Kakadu Plum, a very rich source of vitamin C companies. There are more sources of vitamin C than just oranges. Please stop making everything smell like oranges. In today's video, we are going to have a little chat about vitamin C skincare, and I'm gonna end up saying something that I don't think I initially thought I would say. It's probably somewhere in the thumbnail or title that I'm actually gonna be making a case against using vitamin C in all circumstances. Do not get too mad at me just yet. You gotta hear me out first. And my goal in today's video is less a persuasive essay and more to inform you of what it means to have different forms of vitamin C. You see this so often in skincare products these days, and I don't understand why companies don't bother to tell customers why they're using different forms of vitamin C. There are reasons to do this. They will be a big part of today's video, but in the end, hopefully you just understand a little bit more about the choices that you have in purchasing skincare products. So let's start this video at the very beginning because there may be some people watching this video going, wait, why would vitamin C have different forms? All of that will be explained, but we have to start with an understanding that there is one active form that your skin can utilize and its name is L-ascorbic acid. With L-ascorbic acid being the active form, it is also very well studied at this point. I'm about to tell you everything that it does and this is backed by lots of peer-reviewed published literature, the gold standard of research. So we know that L-ascorbic acid is a potent antioxidant and while that might sound boring, it is anything but. You need to have antioxidants in your skincare routine because the world around you is full of free radicals. And while free radicals might sound like something that maybe hippies are fans of, it's bad. They're found in pollution, they're found in UV light, and they can damage your skin. And this is exactly why you may have heard that pairing vitamin C with your sunscreen is a very smart combo. That's because, again, UV light does contain free radicals and vitamin C helps to neutralize them. L-ascorbic acid can also be considered an anti-aging ingredient because, as we have seen, it helps to boost collagen production in the skin. Remember, you can't just slap collagen on your skin and expect it to uh, magically stick. A far better strategy is to figure out how to get your skin to produce more of its own collagen in the first place, and vitamin C, L-ascorbic acid, is a great ingredient to help do that. And L-ascorbic acid also helps to fight hyperpigmentation, which I will tell you is truly one of the hardest things to treat. L-ascorbic acid is a good candidate for fighting that. I mean, I just sung all the praises of this ingredient, but we've got to talk about the reality with L-ascorbic acid. This molecule, it is very unstable, very unstable. And this is what we really have to talk about. You see, I'm somebody who is very adamant on people knowing what it is that they are buying. And so we have to talk about the fact that sometimes you might buy a product that contains L-ascorbic acid, but you might end up with a product that doesn't, or at least contains less ascorbic acid than it originally did. I want to make sure I'm clear that when companies are selling L-ascorbic acid products and when this happens, this isn't to say that there's any deception on the behalf of the companies selling these products. It's really no different from if you bought something like a carton of milk and you opened it and you left it in your fridge for several weeks at a time and then you went back to drink it and you, you know what happens. Don't, don't drink that milk. Oh, uh, don't drink it. And this is something you can often see in your skincare products. Typically when you buy an L-ascorbic acid product, it should be clear. Sometimes companies do add dyes as well as orange scent. We've already talked about my disliking of that attribute. But typically it should be clear just to help you as a customer know that when it starts turning kind of orangish or brown, it is no longer L-ascorbic acid. It has converted into something else. And by the way, that something else can actually damage your skin. It's a little more complicated. I don't wanna get into uh, the confusing conversation here, but there's several conversions that can happen. Just know, 
When it's brown, flush it down. But also, this ingredient requires a pH of 3.5, which means a couple of things. First of all, it means you need to be careful in applying it. You do not want to layer this over other products that you have just applied. Those products probably have a more skin-friendly pH, and by putting them on together, you might not get the same level of effectiveness from your l acid product. Part two, though, is that this can actually be a kind of sensitizing pH depending on your skin. If you notice that when you apply a vitamin C product, you feel a little bit of a stinging, it's worth noting that that is not actually because vitamin C stings, but rather because that pH of 3.5 is low in comparison to our skin. And so you may feel this kind of disruption that is interpreted as stinging, which is your skin responding to a big change. Now, I don't believe in telling people what to do. Instead, I just believe in adding to education on skincare, sharing research. And so what I want to say about L-ascorbic acid is that, again, this is the most researched form, the only active form of vitamin C, and if it works for you, by all means, continue to use it. For each one of these forms, I'll have some pictures up on the screen of some products that contain that form of vitamin C. As for these options, I will say personally, I don't think you necessarily need to purchase SkinCeuticals. I was not more impressed with SkinCeuticals than I was Geek & Gorgeous. In fact, the Geek & Gorgeous C Glow remains my top pick because they make fresh batches of vitamin C. And if l acid is going to be this unstable ingredient, I really think that's the best way to go. I will also say I was more impressed with the reformulation of Drunk Elephant C. Firma than I thought I would be. I've been watching my little mini here to see when it starts to oxidize, to change color, and so far it hasn't. So this idea that they're using is you kind of almost mix it yourself. You have the powder and then you have the liquid so that it uh, starts going bad at the moment you mix it rather than while it's sitting on the shelves of the store. So let's move on to talking about some of these other forms of vitamin C. Again, these are called vitamin C derivatives because they can convert in your skin into the active form of vitamin C. So let's start out with talking about ethylated ascorbic acid because you will be able to see how clearly similar these two molecules are. You don't have to be an organic chemist. I have faith in you. If you've ever done a puzzle in your life, you can probably see, oh, so yeah, that turns into l ascorbic acid in your skin. Yes, or at least that is the theory. Every one of these derivatives does need to be tested to make sure that is actually happening in your skin. But yes, it is a pretty simple conversion for ethylated ascorbic acid to become l ascorbic acid and hence used by your skin. And honestly, you can probably see just from the molecular structure why it is considered to contain 86.3% vitamin C. This ethylated ascorbic acid, sometimes called EAA, is more stable. It does not suffer from the same issues that l ascorbic acid has. And in fact, you can use this at a much more skin-friendly pH between 4 and 5. In theory, EAA should give you the same benefits of l ascorbic acid once it converts in your skin, but we do, of course, need to make sure that we study and make sure that it is doing what it's claiming to do, but so far we have seen promising research, especially in terms of EAA's benefit on fighting hyperpigmentation. I'm not entirely sure why you don't see this ingredient a lot in products. You do tend to see it in combination products, which we'll talk about later, but yeah, so far there's not a ton of products that focus on this ingredient. Here are a few. Then we have one of my personal favorite vitamin C derivatives. This one is known as sodium ascorbyl phosphate. Isn't that so neat? Do you see the sodium? Do you see the phosphate? Isn't it great how we name molecules in ways that make so much sense? Now, not only does this make for a little bit of a larger molecule, but there is something really important to know with all of these derivatives, and that is you are introducing more onto that L-ascorbic acid molecule, right? You see it. So as a consequence, you might find that some of these derivatives have some kind of added benefits. 
And I personally love sodium ascorbyl phosphate because I am somebody who has dealt with acne. And we actually have studies with sodium ascorbyl phosphate looking at its effectiveness against acne. We have found that it has antibacterial properties and that it compares to benzoyl peroxide at 5%. That's another anti-acne ingredient, but it's a little tricky to use. This one is much easier. This is stable up to a pH of 7. We have studies showing that it still boosts collagen production in the skin, still does have antioxidant properties. And importantly, we have in vivo research, which means it is done in human participants and not just in a dish. Sodium ascorbyl phosphate is truly, it is my favorite vitamin C derivative. Here are a few products that contain sodium ascorbyl phosphate. And in case you missed it, we are doing a bubble review this month on the channel, so I will have more to tell you on that bubble serum, which is also the most affordable option and frankly my favorite. I'm going to end out this video with talking about one more form or derivative of vitamin C. There are plenty more, but I just want to talk about one more that is very popular these days, and its name is tetrahexyl desyl ascorbate, often shortened to THD ascorbate because we don't have all day. It's almost perplexing to me how popular this one is, even though I also kind of do understand it. I've used this ingredient a lot. It's fine. I do like that it is oil soluble. That does give it a big advantage over the water soluble L ascorbic acid as well as the other derivatives we talked about. When an ingredient is oil soluble, it can penetrate more readily into your skin. And because of this, a lot of companies like Peter Thomas Roth like to claim that this ingredient is more potent than L ascorbic acid. I think we should break that down a little bit further because, again, Conversion is required for this to give you the benefits of L-ascorbic acid. You see, Peter Thomas Roth's logic here is that, well, it's an oil-soluble ingredient, so it absorbs more readily into your skin, so it's more potent. But is it? Because it still has to convert, so you actually would get less of this ingredient after the conversion. But yes, more absorbed. So it becomes a little bit more muddy. I just don't like, you know, the, the strong claims that companies sometimes make when there's more to the conversation. You all follow me here. Again, it is an ingredient that you can use at a more skin-friendly pH, a pH of 5. But where things get so tricky with this one is that we just don't have a lot of peer-reviewed published literature on this one. Now again, THD ascorbate is very popular, so it is quite likely that every company using this is conducting their own research, that they are not sharing. Didn't your mother ever teach you to share your toys? Come on! We're trying to make progress in skincare. Can we please start sharing more? But what we have right now is some in vitro data, again, in a dish, showing that this ingredient converts into L ascorbic acid. Okay, good. At least we are getting the active form, in theory. I've also seen the most bizarre study cited as, you know, the effectiveness of THD ascorbate. And that is a study that combined it with L-ascorbic acid. Do you realize that this is like if you went on a job interview, right, and the employers asked you, why should we hire you for this job? And you said, you should hire me because if you pair me with somebody who knows how to do this job and does it really well, together we will do this job really well. How is that the study that we keep citing for this ingredient? Again, and this is so important, a lack of research does not prove that an ingredient doesn't work. And in fact, I will show you some of the products that contain this ingredient, and you should immediately recognize them. We have some very beloved products in this category. Some people swear by Sunday Riley's CEO. I really enjoyed Ghost Democracy's light bulb serum. So it's almost as though what you really have with that ingredient is more anecdotal. And to close out this video, I want to make sure to touch on combination serums so you have the idea of multiple different forms or derivatives of vitamin C, and you can put them all into one product. As mentioned, you may have different benefits from these different forms of vitamin C. Maybe some of them are more effective than others, so it's almost a way of kind of foolproofing a vitamin C serum. I have pictured the Glow Recipe Guava Serum, which I love. I have another video on that if you want more information 
information. I do think it is a, a an excellent product, in fact. So I think it'll be interesting to see if we do start seeing even more brands go in this direction of combining the different derivative options. But my friends, that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you understand the active form of vitamin C and why derivatives still might be a very good option for some. If you found today's video helpful, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you all next time.